So thinking about that list of conditions for no evolution to be occurring for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, um, it was natural selection and mutation, which we've already talked about. So let's talk about genetic drift. Genetic drift is a random change in allele frequencies. And this can happen all the time, but it's actually most likely to happen when a population goes from very big to very small. And so if you had a jar full of 70% dominant phenotype and only 30% recessive, and you were to draw a handful out of that jar, the handful wouldn't necessarily represent the overall phenotype and genotype ratios. So the allele frequencies of that population would change. Um, you might not even draw out a recessive individual at all, or like my sample handful here, there just happen to be a lot of recessive um, phenotypes sitting at the top of that jar. And so um, this is genetic drift. It's a random change in allele frequencies, generally because you've gone from a large population to a small population. And the more extreme that change is, generally the more extreme the change in the loop frequencies can become. So there's two classic examples of genetic drift that have their own um, vocabulary terms that go along with them. One is a bottleneck, a population bottleneck. So if a population suffers large random losses, so this is something like a natural disaster, um, the surviving population might have a very different phenotypic makeup than the original population because you randomly knock out most of the population and I'll show you an example of that in just a second um, because and we call it a bottleneck um, because if you've ever tried to like if you have coins that you keep in a jar and the jar has a really narrow mouth if you were to try and pour the coins out of that jar they wouldn't necessarily pour out very easily and so only a few would come out and so this is what we refer to as a bottleneck effect the other situation is the founder effect, and it's very similar to a bottleneck because, again, you're going from very large to very small. But unlike bottleneck, where most of the population dies, the founder effect does not kill off most of the population. Yay! So if you're a Galapagos finch, for example, and a storm were to knock a random couple of finches um, onto a new uninhabited by finches, island, then you're the founding population of that island, and you're probably, or at least possibly, going to have a very different genetic makeup than your original population did. And so that's the founder effect. Again, it's drift. It's a random change. It didn't mean that those few birds that got blown off course were any more or less fit to survive in their environment. It was just chance that created this new population. Um, but most often, both of these forms of genetic drift decrease genetic diversity because you've gone from a large population to a small one. So here you can see an example of a population. I've just colored the different phenotypes, different colors. And you could see that if I were to circle, you know, one random group, they would not necessarily represent the overall diversity of the population. I could circle another random group, very different sample. If you look at the ones left in the middle, very different sample. Um, and typically the smaller the number of individuals that you circle is, the, the more kind of crazy your new allele frequency is. It's very different than the original population. Gene flow is the movement of genes from one population to another. I remember it because flow has a direction and drift seems random to me because these terms are very similar to each other. I used to get them confused. Um, so if I think of the ocean and drifting, you're, you're kind of out of control of where you're going. But if you're on a river, you're flowing in a direction. You have some sense of where you're going. Um, so migration tends to cause gene flow. Um, so I want you to think about the Galapagos Islands. There they are. Um, a little rough sketch of them. So you've got this cluster of islands in the center that's very similar or very close together. And because they're close together, birds should be able to fly 
back and forth from those islands fairly easily. You can see I've connected them with the orange dots, and that should allow them to share alleles. So gene flow can kind of bring populations you know, to have similar allele frequencies. But there are these scattered islands that are very far away, and it's much less likely that gene flow would happen between those islands, even for flying, you know, species. So, you would expect to see individuals on those far out islands, or the populations on those far out islands, be much more different because the likelihood of gene flow is fairly rare. Tortoises, on the other hand, cannot fly, so their gene flow is limited no matter how close together the islands are, and so you would expect to see lots of differences between the tortoises from island to island to island, irregardless of distance from other islands. Um, so that's something you can observe with gene flow. One more thing to note with gene flow is that generally, as individuals move from one population to the next, you tend to get increased genetic diversity in the new population, and you lose genetic diversity from the old population. So they have a new phenotype in the population on the right. They have that pink allele, whereas we're losing some of the purple alleles, the rare purple alleles, from the population on the left. So gene flow into your population normally or often increases genetic diversity.